fun Q&A. The first question is, what was your favorite experience as a professional cheerleader? I would have to say that my favorite experience has to be winning Super Bowl 48, uh, where the Seahawks played the Broncos and we won the Super Bowl. And obviously it's probably the most amazing experience you can have as a professional cheerleader to be on the world's biggest stage. And, you know, we happened to win. I obviously cheered a game a Super Bowl game where we did not win, but um, that game, Super Bowl 48 in New York, um, was just one of the best days of my life. I mean, the whole the whole entire game, being there with my best friends, uh, it was just an experience that I'll always treasure. So it's, and it felt like, you know, I played, which of course I didn't, but it just felt that huge of a victory. And to be able to, you know, relish in the victory with the Seattle community and the Puget Sound area and, being a part of the parade and all of the community support just leading up to the Super Bowl as well as after. Um, I've never been more proud to be from Seattle and to represent the Seahawks organization. It was just a dream come true. How did the dream and experience of being a professional cheerleader for the NFL shape who you are today? I mean, you know, my journey be of becoming a professional cheerleader was probably a little different because I started pretty late. Um, my first year on the team, I was 33 years old and so, and with two kids. Um, so I had definitely developed as a woman and as a professional having a career. And so being able to experience that dream coming true at that time in my life was huge um, in shaping me of who I am today because it really just really helped me not give up on myself. I mean, I think with age, um, you start to question if you can still go after things that you might have always wanted to do. And I think going after the dream of becoming an NFL cheerleader was just showed me how fearless I am and how stubborn I can be in terms of not giving up and going for something. It took me four tries before I made it onto the team. And I'm just so proud that, you know, I had the wherewithal to stick with it and keep coming back and making it to finals each time and finally achieving my goal. Um, it, it, did, it did shape me into who I am today because um, while I had accomplished a lot of things professionally, I was a mom, um, I'm also, you know, my own individual with my own passion. And so it really just helped me rediscover that passion as I had kind of put it away with becoming a mother and having this demanding career as a lawyer. I think I lost touch with what I really truly enjoy, just Makiba Pate the person, not, you know, Makiba the mom or, to keep the lawyer so um it just helped me get back in touch with who i am and you know living out my passion no matter what obstacles might appear to be in the way and no matter how many times i hear no um so it's just something that i'm really proud of and it definitely shapes me i'm a cheerleader i think by nature i root for everybody i'm just a very positive oriented person and to be able to exude that on the field and out in the community i mean it just really it just makes you your best self in every way. And that's just what I feel like I was able to embody while I was a cheerleader in the NFL. So what really sparked you to want to create a podcast? I am a chatty patty, so I like to talk about things. I love researching. I love getting to know people, um, or asking a million questions. That's probably the lawyer in me. But I think what really sparked that interest was just the fact that you know, when you talk to the press, when you're on a professional cheerleading team, it's very rehearsed and you're really guarded about what you say and you don't want to say anything that could be perceived in a negative light. And I think with the media, it's very easy to just be misunderstood or misinterpreted or they only want to zone in on, you know, the negative uh, highlight or the things that sound salacious for the press. And so I wanted to talk about the issues, but not be mischaracterized. I wanted kind of control over what was said. And so in having a podcast, it's all audio, you know, you're kind of just behind the mic and it really allowed us both, Brittany and I, to to just shed that fear of talking, speaking about issues in our ish industry. I think there's a hesitation to to say things. And, you know, it was really freeing to just have our own space that was safe where we can edit if we don't want to say something a certain kind of way or it might have come out wrong, but just a safe place to talk about things and to be presented in the light that you want to be presented in without 
turning it over to the media to potentially misconstrue what you have to say. I mean, you'll probably, you all probably know that the press loves talking or writing about cheerleading and it's often not in the most positive light. And so it's really helpful to have our own voices in this space. How did you come up with the name and logo for the podcast? The name was pretty easy. It's probably generic, um, the Pro Cheerleading Podcast, but we added the tagline, the truth behind the palms, because we really wanted it to be a guiding light for us to just tell the truth, um, feel comfortable speaking the truth, because it's not that we wanted to paint somebody or a team or anybody in our space in a negative light. It was just being honest and frank about the truth. And you can't really argue with the truth. And so um, we knew it was going to be the good, the bad, the ugly. And I think when, as we talked about issues and navigated through it, that became like our guidepost, our North Star to kind of cover things from all angles, but always be just truthful and honest about it and objective. So we can critique our space. It's not because we don't love it, but because it's just the truth of the matter. I mean, facts are facts and sometimes things are just are not debatable, but it was great to just have that tagline as part of the title of the podcast just so that people knew that it wasn't like a a reveal all tell all you know gossipy kind of a podcast but it was definitely going to be honest and frank and so that was part of the reasoning for the name in terms of the logo i mean goodness it's not easy when you're starting out um trying to create a brand um but had to have pom-poms in there and we just tried to include it in the the letters O for the Pro Cheerleading and Podcast. And um, it was really basic, <laughs> I would say, but you know, we're balling on a budget, but we put it together and um, just tried to pick colors that were neutral from a particular team. And it seems like that's what everybody goes for in the Pro Cheerleading space. It's some combination of pink and white and black, but uh, at the time, it didn't seem that common, and so that's what we went with for the color scheme. What has been your favorite experience due to the creation of your podcast or on an episode? And this is so hard. Um, I have so many favorite moments. Um, dang, it's going to be hard to narrow it down. A few things come to mind. It was a little bit of a gamble, but uh, this was our second season, I believe, and this was around the time of Pro Bowl. And I told Brittany, I was like, the Pro Bowl is like the Super Bowl for cheerleaders. I was like, we have to go to Florida and try to support the women that were selected on these teams and do an episode where we help everybody get to know the Pro Bowl cheerleaders of that year. And I would say it was just a big risk because we put all our money into getting down there all the way from Seattle. And, um, but it was a great way of like connecting everybody and, and helping you know, the experience of Pro Bowl, like reach the rest of the pro cheerleading community. And I feel like that was a big break for the podcast to grow. Um, and so that stands out. I think that's kind of when we kind of broke out as a podcast of what we were trying to do and putting ourselves in front of those Pro Bowl cheerleaders. And they were so gracious and understanding why we were acting like the paparazzi and screaming and cheering for them. Um, and then just, man, there have been some really amazing conversations and I'm so lucky to be able to have interviewed so many amazing people that I look up to in our space. I, if I name anybody, then I would have to name the entire roster of people that I've interviewed as part of the podcast. But one of the things that, or the episodes that is near and dear to my heart, I think is the episode about motherhood. Um, I interviewed, I think a total of uh, five amazing women from different teams, NBA and NFL, who cheered while they were you know, with kids and just talking about what that experience is like and all the sacrifices. I mean, we laughed, we cried. It was just such a beautiful episode um, that launched, I believe that was season six, um, right around Mother's Day. But it was just something that I was just so proud of because those women were amazing and they went after their dreams and they, we just all had a common thread. And so it's just a really beautiful episode. I just, I was so emotional about it and that one comes to mind. And again, I'm just, I'm so grateful to be able to talk to so many people and each interview is special in its own right. I'm so grateful that everybody said yes when, you know, reached out to interview them. I think they've been 
so supportive of the podcast and everything that I've been trying to do with it. And so I have new friends, thanks to the podcast. And, um, and again, just people just showing everybody how amazing and wonderful everyone else is, is just such a joy for me um, because we have some powerhouse people in our space and it's amazing to be a vehicle of, of sharing their stories. So, um, but those are some of the moments that stand out the most for me. So the last question is, what is your ultimate goal with the Pro Cheerleading Podcast? I would say, you know, after seven seasons and I feel like it can go on forever and ever, um, but my, my ultimate goal is just to continue sharing our stories and being a platform to elevate everybody's voices. I think the pro cheerleading industry is changing and shifting and some of the changes are positive and, and some are concerning. And I just hope to always provide a safe space to talk about it, a resource for people to learn and educate themselves on, on issues that are important. I think that we should be thinking about as, um, as we pursue this profession, it's a, it's the highest of the high in terms of where you can go and dance and cheerleading. And I think we just have to be mindful of, it's our space to protect and we work really hard to get to this level. And um, I just hope to continue to provide that space and and hopefully opening the door for other people to do the same. There's been a few podcasts that have started um, in the last year and I think it's amazing to have more voices out there of sharing, you know, just how amazing professional cheerleaders are and that there's just, we're not just out there dancing on the sidelines, we are you know, very well-rounded men and women and have a lot to offer these teams. And so I'm really proud and hoping that the podcast can continue to just provide that space and keep us all connected and hopefully just more united around some of the the greater good that I believe the pro trillion can be in the future um, if we all kind of stick together and support one another. So that's that's my goal with the podcast. Thanks so much for joining me.